for all your support and uh, make sure for this video if you do like it give it a nice thumbs up and click on that subscribe button below so as i mentioned before with the attic hatch this is going to be where your um, trim is going to be sitting on you see all this space here so this is wide open one thing that if you're going to build your own house that you could do is you could put a border of plywood this high so that it stops a good portion of the wind coming in for a smaller detail that i wanted to show everyone is that this is the um, top plate of the outside wall so it's a two by six uh, that's typical for most homes now if you're going to build your uh, plywood wall you want it to be on the outside so not on the inside i've seen that mistake often that way insulation can cover the actual top plate right here is what i was talking about this plywood border that holds resistance from the wind so when the soffit's not installed then this sheet of insulation can be pushed in and it won't push out into the attic uh, unless there's massive winds so uh, the chances of it uh, being disturbed by wind damage in the attic is uh, reduced by quite a bit as you see this here why is this piece of wood there this is not uh, to be stepped on for sure because i would go through the ceiling this is because there's two sheets of drywall that are joint so they need a backing so that the uh, sheets of, ins uh, of drywall don't uh, flop around and uh, to make sure that uh, the ceiling looks flat okay so this right here is another example of <clears throat> a piece of 2x4 that was put in as a lip to accept the drywall that's another important uh, detail for framers so that the drywallers can do their job properly and then the mudders are happy as well as the painters because then the whole uh, ceiling is nice and flush one small little thing if you are going to use scraps make sure to remove the nails especially at the very very edges of piece of wood because i almost caught myself on this because it was sticking out this way so that's a little safety tip when you're um, adding pieces of wood into an attic because once it's covered you don't see the nails you could step on them the other thing i wanted to show is the attic hatch detail okay so for framers what you can do you see how this is good i mean the piece of plywood is flush with the side the only thing is this piece look at how flimsy it is right so how you can easily repair this is you put a border right around of two by four right around here overlaps so that you can screw it in properly and then this doesn't happen when you want to get into the attic you're not going to have this uh, safety issue so this right here is the uh, top framing that i was talking about so you got your osb here uh, for your attic hatch you've got your frame that's right around the bottom and then you've got your frame too that's right at the top there so you just fasten that um, and you put that overlap so that it uh, accepts that other two by four right here and it's a nice solid piece the osb is not gonna go away when uh, you're trying to get into the attic it's not gonna break on you the other thing is you see how you've got a nice piece here and here so that on the inside you can fasten your border um, and then the attic hatch can just sit right on that and it's going to be solid because the border is actually going to be screwed into two by fours and not just the drywall so the weight of the attic hatch will not fall this is going to be where your um, trim is going to be sitting on and here is the two by four framing all around so you have a solid backing that'll hold the weight of the attic hatch is going to be flush with this plywood wall right here this attic hatch is not high enough we're talking at most it's a little bit over a foot high the other thing too the attic hatch is going to sit right on that white strip that you can see right here but there's still a border that is not insulated above and even this little gap would make a difference if the plywood was straight up here so you've also got some really good height on this attic hatch so right at the top there is 24 and a half and uh, we're installing 21 and a half so it's at the bottom of that two by four 
and that's why it's uh, important to have the right attic hatch border height so that uh, you can get your nice R60 if you're doing loose fill installation. Okay, so here we've got a good example of some strapping that was installed and that's uh, something else that either the carpenters can do with some scrap pieces of wood is strap the cathedral ceiling, especially the, the wall here. So this is cathedral ceiling, right? It spans, um, I would say, a good uh, 16 feet down. And so this is the gable wall for the end of the cathedral ceiling. And you see there's gaps too that I'm gonna be filling um, just like this, you know. I'll just fill that right here. And this uh, strapping allows the sheets of insulation to stay put, right? So that they won't fall down over time. And uh, that's the best way because I've seen a lot of homes that don't have that strapping. And of course the sheets of insulation, they fall down over time. And next thing you know, your wall has uh, no insulation. And there's a cold spot as well as uh, mold buildup. Because on the other side of this in uh, Canada, there's the vapor barrier right here. So right here is a perfect example of the um, two foot border, OSB border. And it's on the good side of the exterior wall, which is right here. So that I'm able to cover this with loose fill insulation up to that uh, two foot mark. And uh, so the entire uh, exterior wall is gonna be properly insulated. If I didn't cover this, then the uh, insulation would have a weakness right at that corner here because there'd be no insulation on top of this two by six. So right here, you see that border there that is able to uh, hold that R60 right at the outside wall. And then here is your nice attic hatch that uh, can also hold the R60 without uh, disturbing it. So it's uh, held up pretty nicely.